Welcome back, my friends. It's Maura Marisol covering this week's Parsha. Last week, we talked about the furniture that God requested for the Tent of Meeting in the courtyard area. In this week's Parsha, which is Vayikra, we will talk about the food and God's expectations for behavior from his people. But let's first look at the letters that spell the word Vayikra. We have a Vav. A yud, a kuf, a resh, and an aleph. All these words spell vayikra. So what does vayikra mean? It means he called. And the one who was doing the calling was God. God called Moshe to come to his tent of meeting since this is the special place that God will talk to Moshe, it would be in the middle where all the Israelites surrounded it. So what God wanted to talk about was sacrifices. Now what is a sacrifice? That is a very big word. Sacrifice means that you're giving up something that is very important to you and you give that to God. Why does God want sacrifices? Well, he has expectations from his people. He expects his people to act kindly towards others, to follow his rules, okay? He wants them to follow his rules and to be respectful of him. But many times people don't follow rules, right? So he requires specific sacrifices from them to help them remember. what They, they needed to remember what they did so that they wouldn't keep making the same mistakes. Because it is a sacrifice, it really means a lot. So every time you have to give something that means so much to you, you're going to remember because you don't want to keep doing that. And that was his point. So let's talk about sacrifices. There were different sacrifices. Some were required and some were not. God required a sacrifice from people when they committed a sin. A sin is when you don't follow one of God's rules. When you bring a sacrifice for sin, you're saying that you're sorry and that you won't do this again. Or you'll try your very best not to do it again. If someone took an item from the sanctuary and used it for another purpose than what it was supposed to be used for, then they had to bring a sacrifice. But sometimes sacrifices were given to God for peace and happiness. Do you ever find that when something is really special or really good, that you want to share it with somebody? You ever find that, friends? That you're so happy that you just want to share it, share it with someone? Well, God wanted people to share their happiness with him too. And the way to share the happiness is to bring a sacrifice. But the sacrifices weren't just anything. God was very specific about what he wanted. He preferred only certain types of meat and a specific type of cake, which was made with grain. Now, not only did he want these specific things, one or the other, but he required salt to be in all of the sacrifices that you would give him because he really likes salt. Do you have any type of food that you find that is your favorite food? Well, that's the same with God. Those were his favorite items. And that's what he was telling his people. Do you ever find that you like a certain spice? Or maybe you love ketchup with most of your things. Or maybe you like something else. Well, God really likes salt with the sacrifices. That's what he wanted for his food. He wanted plenty of salt. But not everyone could give the same type of sacrifice. So he gave them options. Meat was very expensive for many people, and not everyone could do that. So what they would do is make a special cake. It's an unleavened cake. And this cake, we will pretend that this is a cake because it was flat because it wasn't leavened. It would be made of really fine flour. There would be extra virgin olive oil with it. There would be frankincense with it, and of course the salt. And you put it all together, and you bring it to the priest for a sacrifice for God. Hmm. I feel like we've talked about frankincense before, haven't we? We have. Yes, 
We talked about it when we talked about the altar of incense. That was the spice that was supposed to permeate. It was supposed to be smoke within the holy place all the time, day and night. So frankincense is another favorite of God's. The point of these sacrifices is that God wants his people to be aware of their behaviors towards others. Sometimes they hurt others by mistake and sometimes on purpose. Sometimes they take things that don't belong to them, but not everyone. The point is that the sacrifices is what help them to remember. But how do we know what to do? God tells us in his Torah what to do. Your mommy and daddy also tell you about their rules too, right? What would happen if there were no rules? Hmm. Would that be fun? Would that be confusing? Hmm. Let's find out from our friend, Michael. We are going to read No Rules for Michael, written by Sylvia Roos, and illustrated by Susan Simon. Michael's class was learning about the Ten Commandments. When the Jewish people received the Torah, his teacher said they received the Ten Commandments, God's special rules that show us how to live. We should not hurt others. We should not steal. We should honor our parents, Miss Sharon explained. We also have special rules here at school, she continued. Can you think of some rules we have in our classroom? We shouldn't hit anyone, Julie answered. Or stand on the furniture, added Sam. You should share toys, said David. And have a cleanup time, Rachel noted. Michael was sitting with a frown on his face. Hmm. Miss Sharon looked at him and asked, Do you have something to add, Michael? I don't like rules, Michael replied. It would be a lot more fun if we could do whatever we wanted. School would be the best place if we didn't have any rules. Miss Sharon smiled and said, All right, Michael. Tomorrow we won't have any rules in our classroom. Then you can decide if you like having rules. Yippee, shouted Michael. Now, Michael doesn't have a frown anymore, does he? He looks very happy. The next morning, Michael ran into the classroom, excited that there would be no rules. Suddenly, he tripped over Julie's backpack and nearly fell to the floor. Hey, Julie, your backpack is supposed to be your cubby, yelled Michael. No, it's not, replied Julie. There are no rules today. Yeah, you know rules. Hmm. Michael shrugged and walked over to the puzzle table. As he began working on a puzzle, Rachel grabbed one of the pieces. I need that piece, cried Michael. Give it back. There aren't any rules today, Rachel reminded him with a giggle. I don't have to share. <gasps> no sharing. How sad. At circle time, Michael wanted to show his friends his new dinosaur, but no one would listen. David was racing his new car back and forth across the floor as several of the children squealed with delight. You have to be quiet. It's my turn now, Michael demanded. No, we don't, responded David. There are no rules today. On the playground, Michael waited for his turn on the tricycle. Sam was pretending to be a firefighter racing to a burning building. He zoomed by Michael several times. Woo, woo. He screamed, trying to sound like a siren. May I have a turn now, Sam? Michael asked, hopefully. No, oh, sang, sang Sam in his siren voice. There are no, oh, rules today, eh? Oh, boy, no sharing. At snack time, Jonah playfully grabbed some of Michael's crackers without asking. Michael didn't say anything. There are no rules today, he thought sadly, as a tear slipped down his cheek. What's wrong, Michael? Miss Sharon asked gently. I thought having no rules would be fun, Michael tearfully replied. 
I could do whatever I wanted, but I haven't been able to do anything I want today. No one will listen to me, no one will give me a turn, and no one will share. I guess rules are important. Rules show people how to care about each other. Miss Sharon hugged Michael. You're right. You're right, she agreed. That's why God gave us the Ten Commandments, and that's why we have rules here at school. We need to treat others the way we want to be treated. Do you think we could have our rules back tomorrow? asked Michael. How about right now? replied Miss Sharon with a smile. Children, when you finish your snack, it's cleanup time. Yippee! shouted Michael as he rushed to be the first one to pick up the toys. The end. Well, you see, my friends, rules are important. Thank you for sharing this time with me. I hope to see you next week. Bye!